Wow. It's not even noon. And this Fujitsu 18K, 18,000 BTU dual zone system, which we started at 735, is done. You guys are going to really, really, really love this video. Make sure you stick around. Watch it to the completion. And as always, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. Let's get going. It's me, Mikey Pipes, and Peter, AKA Peter Pan, Peter Piper, or just Peter, that works too. Hope everyone's having a blessed day. Today, we're installing this Fujitsu 9000 BTU unit, and this one too, on the top floor of this house over here in Woodmere. I'm gonna show you techniques that I use to get the job done efficiently, effectively, and by all means, before noon. Let's get going. All right, Peter, we're already one step ahead of the game because the first one is done. Mm -hmm. Let's work on the second. I already took the liberty of securing the wall mount bracket. Fortunately, I got this wood plywood or this wood paneling and I took some measurements. All right, sorry about that. Took some measurements and I am six inches off this wall. It gives me a couple inches of clearance here. There's my center drill hole and I got screws along the top, the side, and the bottom. All right, so when this unit's hanging, it's not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna drill a hole right there with my opener, the spider bit, right there. Actually, no, we're not drilling a hole there. Sorry, because, <laughs> oh, that would not have been cool. We wouldn't drill through the side of the guy's house. Let's take a look in here. We have the roof line, All right? There's the other line set connections coming out of the wall there. Yeah, right there. Maybe even a little bit lower if you can, if possible. And we'll have gravity take uh, take effect here. A lot of you guys told me in the comments on previous installs that you take you know, the zoom lock and you cut off the flares. I have to have good luck with flares, so we're good with that. When I hang this unit here, we're gonna take our line set covers right here and go straight down and then go into this knee wall right there because we're in an exterior wall here and this is the best location in this room small room 7000 btu unit come straight down they could paint it yellow if they want to all good go straight in there we'll run across with our line set and our drain and our uh control wiring right to the outdoor unit which we're going to install next notice here's the unit this side is where my lines are going to drop down now Jiu-Jitsu is kind enough where we have knockouts. We have a knockout here on the right side. We have a knockout on the bottom and also on the opposite side. A lot of you guys use that mighty bracket where you put the bracket on the wall and then you use this device to hold this unit in place so you can do the connections right behind the unit. I like to go outside in all my installations whenever possible because then I hang the unit on the wall, I run the control wire just like that. I'm out of the room. I'm out of the room. So we're going to carefully cut this back a little bit. We've got a pair of nice snips. All right? A little cut right there. A little cut right there. Just to get started. And the rest breaks out like such. Just like that. Next I'm going to do, I'm going to carefully take the line set out. Like that. 90 degrees up. I'm going to take my drain. All right, that's going to go down there, and I'm going to take this line set and bend that straight down carefully. Make sure we don't kick anything, kink anything. We just want to make it nice and straight. Now, obviously, I'm under the unit, and that's what we're going to use the line set covers here to get this thing nice and basically look, look, make it look like tits. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Daniel has the 7K unit. He's securing it to the wall. Top first, clips into place. You're gonna, there you go. And voila, perfect. Look at that. Now we're gonna take one length of 100 millimeter line set cover. Let me get the, let me get the inside and the front side. 
with the little hacksaw. Okay, we're gonna make a nice cover for that, and we're gonna drill a hole right through there into the knee wall. All the way to the ground. Uh, close to it. Yeah, maybe a few inches off the ground. Yep. We Perfect. Might, we might have a length that's like long enough, or just a little bit too long that's already been cut. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, right now, Daniel, and by the way, check out his YouTube channel. It's DC HVAC. And no, folks, he doesn't work in Washington, D.C. That's his initials. If people actually keep asking. <laughs> I know. See, because you're gaining popularity. So we're going to do the wiring. You're going to notice that there's three terminals marked one, two, and three, and then a ground wire, a ground connection, right? What works for me is I take black on one, white on two, red on three. Some of you guys like to do black and red and white, but on the low wall Fujitsu units, terminals one, two, or three are actually marked black, white, red. And of course the ground goes to that little screw terminal right there. All right, so he's working on the ground wire right now. And when we loop it around that ground screw, we want the wiring in a clockwise orientation because when we tighten it up, right, if it's counterclockwise, it's gonna wanna come out. Struggling, you got the camera pressure. Okay, you can do it. You got it. Bring it back a little bit, and there you go. We can also use those little uh, those connectors, those crimp connectors. Could use that too. But I like to just use straight wire to connection. Primarily because there's a little note here and, and it says use copper conductors only. And unless I have like copper or copper brass crimp connectors, I don't like to not do that. So we're gonna put the little uh, clamp on the wires right there and then put the cover on and then we're gonna run some line set covers straight down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this 7K BTU, Fujitsu single, uh, Fujitsu high wall ductless unit. It's on the wall. You guys are thinking, oh, Mikey Pipes, how are you gonna get the cover on and off? Well, unfortunately, we're gonna have to move the valance, which we did, but for cleaning purposes, it just lifts up like that, and you can take the filters out to wash them. And if need be, you need to service this thing, you take down the valance, it's just two screws, and you're good to go. You're gonna notice that in that bottom right-hand corner, here is my 100 millimeter, line set cover this is the backing of it i have it secured with a couple sheetrock screws it's not going to go anywhere and we'll have our connections here for our three eighths and our quarter inch our drain and our electrical is going to be one continuous piece from one two three ground through the hole we're going to run some pvc piping and out through the hole over there that's daniel drilling that we're going to get to that we're going to run our lines through to go to the outdoor condensing unit all right, so we're just going to clean up in this room. And one of the last things I'm going to do is adjust the clock on the remote. Hit clock adjust and then adjust your time. It is 8.35. Let's go to 8.35. Come on. Is it 8.35? 8.38. Boom. Okay. And then bingo. There's our time. We're gonna leave this in the respective room before we actually drill a hole and mount it anywhere. anywhere. We're gonna review with the homeowner where they would like the wireless remote control. All right, one set of instructions and manuals for one room and another set of instructions and remote for the other. Like 30 minutes yeah, it's all good. At least I have much better quality video. All right, here is our Fujitsu. This is the 18,000 BTU dual zone outdoor heat pump condensing unit. There's the hole that we drilled, as you can see right there. And we are going to set up our line set covers. We're gonna put a wall inlet there and come straight down with a 100 millimeter. The objective is here to mount the wall mount bracket right here, the bottom of the unit. I wanna be right here. Plenty of clearance from the garbage cans, the garbage receptacles. And for all you guys in the UK, the rubbish receptacles. And of course the recycling bin clear all that and plus it's always a good idea 
to elevate it off the ground, off of grade, because when it snows or in winter time, if it's on heat pump mode, right, we're not going to have that icicle. You're not going to have it sitting in an iceberg. The iceberg is going to be below the unit. All right. There's my penetration through the brick. That's going to contain my two three eighths and two quarter inch with my two control wires and also the two drains. I took a Sharpie and I marked the openings in the wall mount bracket, one, two, three, and four. And now I'm gonna drill that open with the Milwaukee M18, inch and a quarter, hammer drill. One, two, three, four, like butter. Perfect. I get two more in the middle. So we've made our, our holes with our masonry bit to accommodate these lag bolts or these yeah, lag bolts. These are cool. They are pretty cool. And made specifically for masonry. We're hammering them in, make it flush with them. And now we're gonna, I already have a bit ready set up. We need to get the adapter and we're going to send these home. One, two, three, four, and the wall mount bracket will be secure. bottomed out it's all good oh, just go to the go to the ones you started it with to begin with kind of like a car tire good go to the one in the middle there perfect go back to the one on the far end perfect if you really wanted to you can get a deep socket and make these really tight but if you want you can hang on this thing like an orangutan it ain't going anywhere want to hang on like an orangutan try it <laughs> like magic she's on there i'm switching my drill bit from the 9 16 to the half inch and we got these feet and these little rubber little spacers we're gonna secure those daniel's having a little struggle there it's got to line it up with the hole daniel mm -hmm. Just gotta stick it in the hole. It's lined up. <laughs> and one, two, three, and four. And this bad boy is not gonna go anywhere. Next, we're gonna start connecting, start setting up our track system for the line set covers. From there, straight down, and then start running some line set. Okay. We got the OSHA approved ladder with setback. And Daniel's gonna drill a hole. To secure the 100 millimeter wall inlet. Perfect. Get the other one drilled if you can. Perfect. All right, very nice. Now, before you get up from down there, we're gonna give him some of these bad boys, two anchors and the hammer. We'll switch tools. And I'll try to do it one-handedly. Let me get rid of this. Bingo. Let me give you these two anchors. Hammer those two little plastic shields in there. And then I'll give you some screws. Okay. Daniel has the back of the line set cover in place. Deep plane, deep plane. And once that's done, we're going to run our condensate tubing and our line set play our cards right we should be done by 11. all right all right now we just ran three of the four line sets the three eighths two three eighths and two quarter inch insulated line sets and we're running out of space in this hole which is very very tight so i may have to drill out i'll make it a little bit bigger carefully that way I can accommodate one more because I have two drains, two control wires, two three eighths, and two quarter inch. And it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight, but we'll make it happen. So stay tuned. And make sure you smash that thumbs up button, guys. And let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. All right, for the next part of the job, we're gonna wire line one, line two, and ground. I already ran a whip. I'm using half inch Liquitite 
half inch liquid tight straight connector and i got another one at the end of this my electrician's going to wire a disconnect and bring line voltage here we're going to use a spade connector to connect our ground l1 and l2 hi peter hello want to say hi to your mother hello mom <laughs> We want to tell the community and subscribers to smash that thumbs up button. Smash that thumbs up button. <laughs> All right. I have my ground complete. L1, L2. Looks nice and tits. Wires tucked in. And there's my whip. And Peter, take that piece right there, that straight connector, and put it on the end of this uh, half-inch liquid tight and uh, make that nice and tight and leave that for the electrician. I am now gonna run circuit A and circuit B wiring. If you remember the wiring uh, colors that we used inside, we use black, white, red. Black is one, white is two, red is three, and of course, ground. So we're gonna wire up all these right here. And then we're gonna do the line set connections right back there. And if I could just steal your attention from this video for a real quick second. If you enjoy watching this video, a step-by-step -step tutorial on how my company efficiently, effectively, and professionally install, for example, today, a Fujitsu dual zone, 18K outdoor with a seven and a nine indoor. If you like this type of content, let me get your feedback down in the comments section down below. It's right down there. If you're on a mobile device or a desktop, I really appreciate it. Obviously, if you're watching this on your big, giant, 85-inch flat screen TV in your living room with your entire family, well, it's kind of hard to do that. But if you have a moment, I really appreciate getting your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. As my long-term subscribers and viewers know, all 42,000 of you, I respond to almost all comments. And if you talk trash, I'm just going to just you know just get rid of you so constructive criticism i appreciate but you know let's not let's be let's all be gentlemen and women be ladies let's keep it professional neat and clean there's no need to bat, bad mouth anyone all right smash that thumbs up button remember sharing is caring and if you haven't done so already subscribe now let's get on with the show okay it is about 10 minutes to 10. today is wednesday june 20th 2022 there's circuit a and this is circuit b i used a connector crimp connector for my ground and i have black white and red and black white and red at this point of the game at this point of the install we're going to put the electrical cover back on close this up and move on to the line set all right so I got all of my line sets through. My control wiring is completed. It's wired to the indoor and outdoor units, and so is my electrical whip for line voltage. We're gonna, we're gonna go take a peek and see what Daniel's doing and what status he's at right now to see if I can pull any of this back or maybe I have uh, some slack door. Maybe I just need him to feed him a little bit more because I wanna, I wanna slightly bend those and get them into the track system and get that cover on and connect to the two zones, unit one and unit two. But Daniel, you saved me a trip inside. How are we doing inside? Connected. Drain is good too? I think it's good, yeah. You think it's good? I've tested for water. Okay. All right, so now we're up to this. Excellent, how's it look inside? Tits? It looks okay. You say it looks tits. I know you're not gonna say I'm it. Gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> say it looks muy bueno. Yeah. Insulation is like I would have to tear out the insulation, the whole line, to get the line set straight. Oh, because it got the spray way. foam. Yeah. See, spray foam has its pros and its advantages. The pros are, it's really, 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 very, very energy efficient. The pros, the cons are, it sucks to work with. Facts. So it's like making use to every bracket. Yeah. Can you tell them to give you a shout out on your uh, and subscribe to your channel? I already did that. We'll do it again. You have to remind them. People sometimes like to skip ahead. This is DC HVAC on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description box right there. Right there. No, it's actually right there, okay? Make sure you smash that subscribe button and check his channel out. All right, so the nice connections, the three-eighths and the quarter-inch. 
we drilled another hole there for our drain. Very nice. Let's see. Now I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, so everywhere, you have to support it every couple of feet. Because when water's in there, it's going to sag, it's going to sag down and it's not going to come out nice. Now, granted, I see, I know, I see what you're talking about. You have the spray foam here. It's a pain in the ass to work with. Uh, but we have to maybe get some zip ties yeah, and secure, it. and let's secure that. And the other one, well, let's take a look down there and see. All right, keep it uncut, unedited, raw. We got the spray foam here, so it's one thing to our disadvantage. And the other one's there. Okay. Not bad. You're going to have to clean up the, the drain there a little bit, all right? And we want to make sure the drain stays in the bottom of the hole, right? We have to work. Remember, gravity is not our friend here, right? It is our friend. Gravity is going to take this condensate away. And when this thing, when this unit's up and running, when it's up and running, and it's hot out there and it's humid outside, this thing's going to be condensing like a mother effer, all right? So there's that. Let's get some zip ties. We're going to secure this corrugated line you know we could have also ran three-quarter pvc but it is what it is we're gonna run some three-quarter pvc outside say hi mom hi. all right for connecting our line sets outside i'm going to show you two things that i use we're going to use both of them on this on this install service call so you can check that out let me get your thoughts and feedback. all right one of the things that i bought last year i'm just going to pull it out of my Uncut, unedited, raw. All right. <laughs> That's the benefit of being a viewer to this channel. I show it like it is. I don't cut anything out. Even when I make mistakes, I show it. But one of the things I bought last year, and this is by NAVAC or, I don't know. Yeah. NAVAC. This is the NEF6LM. So let me show you this. There it is. This is a cordless flaring tool. Okay. So we're going to use this on some of them. And for the others, a little bit of a mess here, but it should still be in here somewhere. Where is it? It should be here. The spin. I want to show you the spin. And of course, it's not where I left it. Of course not. It's not here. I don't know where it went. It's very upsetting. I hate when things don't go back where they were. Because this is where I kept the spin for maybe about three years. And I haven't seen it in a while. One of my biggest pet peeves is losing tools. The tools that you used in your trade, right? They're like, they're like your American Express card. You don't leave home without it. And it is probably one of the most single biggest investments that you have on your truck. Most of the times they belong to you and not the company. So here's a Mikey Pipes, just a word of advice to the new guys out there, the apprentices. If you're riding around in a nice, neat and organized truck like this one is, put stuff back where it belongs because now I don't know where my spin is and I'm pissed off. All right, we're at that point, ladies and gentlemen. Danielson is working hard to get this 100 millimeter cover on everything up in here. Don't give up. Don't don't lose the top. You got to keep pressure on the top. Push, uh, okay, so push it. But it's like uh, like it twisted down here. It twisted. That's what I got to do. Oh, don't lose it. Right here, those lines need to kind of go like that. Or the other way around? Yeah. So like this? No, no, no. Like not no. like that? This one and this one, they need to trade places. So. The other way. Yeah. Hold it. Really? Like that? No, no, no not this I, one. Which one? This one. This one and this one? Which way they gotta go? Right there, yeah. Like that. Okay. Like that. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Now you gotta just work on the top again. They'll fit in there, Daniel. You can do it! Keep pressure, keep pressure. Keep it, come on. Oh. Oh. Come on. What are you saying? Do you got an extra go go gadget arm? Come on, you got right there. You can do it, come on. This is exhausting. 
No, it's not exhausting. Don't you go to the gym several times a week? I'm on. He's a little bit right there. Oh. You see? Oh my God. Was that so hard? Yeah. No, it was not. No, it wasn't. Look at that. That looks tits. Do you want to hand me something? I'm going to give you this. Oh, a bee. A bee? Get him. I don't think that, that's not a bee. A wasp. Yeah, smack with your hand. That land that landed on your leg before. I didn't want to say anything. See so you're doing that. Here's the drill. <coughs> I think I'm dying. Oh my god, it's 10, 18 in the morning. And you know what? It's it's hot. It oh, what kind of drinks we have in the in the freezer? Uh, two sprites, a ginger ale, and some other drink. In the freezer? Yeah. Okay, how long did you put it in? About 20 minutes ago? I think so. Okay, good. Can we grab them? Not yet. Oh. Oh. All right. It's now time for the ladder to depart. We no longer need the ladder. Peter's going to manhandle the ladder. Let's stick it onto my truck. Did you notice that the way your ladder is installed in your truck now is different than it was before? Yeah. Okay, now it's more safe. It goes, safe, it goes in between those two, center of the screen, it rests in between there. So when you push up on that piece there, right, it pushes into place and it makes sure it doesn't go too much side to side. What? Because the, the way it was before, it, it held it in, like it held one leg. Just one. In between both rungs. So it no, it didn't, because I, I had to adjust your thing. I'll show you. I adjusted... Your ladder, because now, look, your ladder. Yeah, it goes inside of that. Inside of that. Before it wasn't. Yeah, before it was pinch between the ladder, just one. Just one rung, yeah. There, yeah. So now, if you look on your ladder rack, you have the one on the left and the one on the right. So now it won't go up. And it's secure from left to right. Kind of how like that is, like this. See? We adjusted this piece and we set it properly and now it's secure, right? And there it is. The biggest pain in the ass are these ladder racks because see that tree? Yeah, the death of ladder racks. Yep. Let's work on line sets. I would cut right around there. Okay, we're gonna start from the top and work our way down, okay? Now let's take our tubing cutter and let's cut right around there with the tubing cutter. Now that that is cut, we're not gonna deburr it because when we flare this, I'm gonna show you how this is gonna work. I'm gonna do a sample flare on this piece right here. Here is the adapter. They make different sizes. This is the quarter inch, okay? And there's a little blocker piece right there. So we're gonna put this there. I'm gonna line that up with that. Now, we're gonna spin this around, right? And does it go in? Yeah. Yeah. Is it going that way? Yes. It goes in this way. Push it into place like this. We pull down the trigger like that. And there's a little button right there. We push that button in. It stops. The flare is done. Let's open this back up. And obviously, if we were actually connecting this to the unit, we're going to make sure that we put the nut on first, right? But is there anything wrong with that? It looks perfect. Is there anything wrong with that? A little nope. bit of dirt. But... A little bit of dirt. A little cocky there, but that's fine. That's because you had a dirty cutter. Yeah. yeah. But very nice. Are oh, we going to use some nylog? Oh, it's Okay. Now, we have this piece right here. Let's do that again. Here is that adapter. We're gonna line this up right here. I'm gonna push that in right there. Okay, and my piece holds back right there. Now I'm gonna take this gun. I'm gonna slide it in over there. Again, we're not with, not working with a lot of space here. I'm gonna pull down the trigger, push the button, and she's gonna flare perfectly 
every single time. Okay? It goes forward, then it goes reverse. Pop that open, slide that out, and there is the perfect flare. Now, and that's for the three quarter. All right? So we have the three quarter, and we're gonna use the three eighths on today's install. It comes with that cool little carrying case. It comes with a, with a uh, charging adapter to charge the battery. And it comes with several other adapters for the other size pipes. We're gonna throw a little nylog on the face of the union connection there, or this flare connection, sorry. We're gonna throw a little bit of nylog on there. I used to like to use nylog, not the white one, but the regular nylog that Daniel has. So we'll take a little bit of nylog. Got some cocky there. Let's show them the nylog. This is also by Refrigeration Technologies. I wish they were a sponsor of the channel, but you know what? There's only so many sponsors I could take. And you know, for now it's just Bosch and Ellie Tech and, ooh, the other one is HIK Micro. We'll put a little bit of nylog right there, right there. And we'll take our clean finger and wipe that there. And now we're gonna take our first connection. And get on there. Okay. There, line it up, and the nut will thread on easy and smoothly. If it doesn't go on easy and you can't do it finger tight right away, move the pipe around like I'm doing right now and make it nice and snug. Now, I'm going to take my torque wrench. This is by Crescent. This is a torque wrench. I'm going to set it for whatever it says in the manual, and I believe for a quarter inch, it says around 18 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to take my torque wrench, and I know what 18 pounds of pressure is because I have it built into my, my guns. You see these guns? Not like Air Force Nun, who's actually got his ass bl uh, back blown out, but just like that, 18 pounds of pressure. Done, perfect. Look at that. That is a perfect flare, perfect connection, perfect bend, perfect quarter inch line going to that unit B or circuit two in that smaller bedroom. All right, let's do the others. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Uh-oh, what? I didn't put the nut on. Yeah, I hope you have enough slack on there. I should. You see, and I just told the people that make sure you put your nut on. Now, where's your tubing cutter? I'm going to show you something. Oh, in case yeah, I know it. You know it, but yeah. we, maybe the others don't know it. Let's show them, though. We have to show them. On your tubing cutters, right, you see that little notch right there? That, that little indentation right there. See that? That is to cut off flares, right? So you can save the pipe and just... Just cut off what you need, right? Those little notches right there. That's to cut off flares. Did you know that, Peter? Look, you learn something new every day, ladies and gentlemen. So we're cutting off just the flare because Daniel, I did this last AKA time DC HVAC on YouTube, forgot to put the nut on. Test, 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 test. Okay, so now we're gonna do that again. Just gonna put the nut on. Gonna put the adapter on for three eighths. All right, just like that. Perfect. And then he'll put the tool into place, clamp it down, and press the trigger. Okay, there you go. Push the button, and a perfect flare every time. Just make sure you put your nuts on. You know, no bueno. No way, boss. There you go. The tool slides out. Take the adapter off. And perfect. Every time. Now, some of you may be saying, Mikey Pipes, you know what? I'm a DIY guy. I only occasionally install ductless systems. You don't need to buy a $450 auto flaring tool. You can get yourself a nice, reliable flaring tool, you know, a block and the, you know, thing that spins around. You can get one of those. I don't know, I guess you could get really a, a nice, you know, uh, yellow jacket one, probably for about 180, 200 bucks. You can also go with one that's $20 like this, Amazon. $20 on Amazon. Or you can use like a rigid one that you get at Home Depot that's designed for plumbing. Listen, the, the, the principle is still the same. You know, just you don't want to use one for plumbing on HVAC because you get contamination there on the on the flaring tool, things like that. You want to be careful with that. But um, unless you're going to go with a, a Mr. Cool DIY uh, ductless mini split that comes with pre-charged line sets.
<laughs> not a sponsor of the channel and I'm not interested. Sorry, Mr. Cool, not interested. So that's a good question, Peter. How many pounds of torque do we need enough. on a 3 8 And Daniel's answer is enough. You see, maybe that's what those hacks at your last company told you. Those, literally those fools that vent the refrigeration, refrigerant out instead of recovering. Those hacks. Hacks. And no vacuum. And no vacuum. Full vacuum, but not really. We should look it up, Peter. Get the manual mm -hmm. and see what the pounds of pressure for torquing a 3 8 line is. Let's see. So there you go. On page, English 8. Flare nuts, what? torquing, 3 8 23.6. The 31.1 and the quarter inch. Oh, man, I was way over 11.8 to 13.3. So, and here's your, there's your a chart right there. So, it tells you how to, it gives you illustration in case you can't read English to see how you do it. And then there's some numbers, but I guess you need to read English if you're going to do this. But there's English, French, Espanol. Not bad. You want something to drink? What? What? It's a big fucking eight, three eights. Say Buero, that's a long flight. It's like 18 hours. Um, what's the refrigerator? Is it a kitchen? Yeah. Freezer? I think so. You think so? How many drinks are in there? Four or three? Five. Five drinks. What do you want to drink, Daniel? Anything. Okay. Cold. Anything cold. Okay. All of the line sets, the two circuits are complete. We're now going to pressurize circuit A circuit B and make sure that holds and is leak free. Daniel's using his field piece, the S-Man refrigeration manifold and micron gauge. It's purging out the nitrogen from the line. <laughs> and we're gonna introduce some nitrogen. We're gonna go to about 400 PSI and make sure that circuit A it holds. No, we're not adding any 410 on. Now, we have 405.1 microns. You want to explain what the uh, the temperature clamp is doing? It's reading the temperature of the pipe so that if that affects the pressure, it takes it into consideration. Excellent. Because as some of you know, and some of you don't know, temperature equals pressure. And if the outdoor and indoor temperature change, while we're doing a pressure test, pressure test so is the pressure. So that's gonna compensate for that. Pretty neat that field piece does this with the S-Man tool. Okay, we're gonna utilize the field piece S-Man with the built-in micron gauge. It's not gonna show us anything for a while, so let's see how long this bad boy takes. For the vacuum pump, we're using the Mikey Pipes YouTube channel sponsor, Ellie Tech. This is their two-stage. This is the SVP7. I don't know if you can see in the screen. We have a digital touchscreen display right there. Tells the status, the motor's running. Yeah, no shit. And it's at 510 microns, which is reading it right here, which is the wrong place for that to be reading it. You want to read it at the unit itself. All right, let's go see what's going on up here. And as you can see, we're at, where is it? Oh, 5,000 microns. Okay. And 47.50. 45, 4250, 4000. So we're dropping. While we're letting this drop, while we're letting this recover, I'm going to tie in the two drains. I'm going to put a T here with an elbow and we're going to secure the drain pipe with a uh, clamp and some anchors. All right, while we are waiting for the machine to vacuum down, we are at 892 microns. We're going to test the drains, make sure they're draining well. Daniel right now is pouring some water into the evaporator of both units. Looks very nice. So that's one, which is perfect. And I'm gonna wait for this one to start draining. And we're gonna cut a T in right here and put an elbow and have this just drip into there. So that way I have one pipe going down. And if, for serviceability, I can, oh, there it is. There's the water of the other. For servicing, I can easily access the other one, if I need to pull it out and blow it through the drains or use a vacuum and suck them out. So, very nice. We have drainage on both units. Perfect. You guys know I keep it uncut, unedited, and raw on this channel. And one thing that's pissing me off besides, I can't find my spin in my truck. And this is that 
Ellie Tech vacuum pump. Let me show you what's going on. Look at that. She is just slowly dropping, slowly dropping. So I sent Peter to the truck. He got the Hilmer vacuum pump. We're gonna take this black line. We're gonna hook it up to the vacuum pump, all right? And we're gonna make some moves. We're gonna close off this one. That's closed. Hook this up, Peter. Actually, bring the vacuum pump over so you, you, you don't have it. Uh, uh, it's not going to stretch the hose. There you go. So let's hook that up to the vacuum pump. We're not going to well, use both. We could use both. That's yeah, We could. Yep. We can use both. Another thing that's not in our favor. It might be this one. It might be the one on the right-hand side. Another thing that's not to our favor is that we're, uh, we're vacuuming down through a manifold. So and too many feet of hose but it's a small system yeah, like two three eighths two three two i'm oh, sorry two three eighths two quarter inch make sure it's nice and tight all right and then we'll have a shitty vacuum okay we'll hook that up there we're going to turn the pump on now if i had a, i guess if i had a mr cool diy mini split system i wouldn't need to do this but <laughs> Okay, so now that pump is on. She's running. Let's crack open this one. Let's crack open the other. And we already have a night and day difference, as you can see. She's jumping down like crazy. She knows we ain't playing games. 420 microns a minute. That's impressive. Yeah. All right. We've been vacuuming down for a while. We're at 358 microns and she's holding. It's time to dump the charge. What's great about Fujitsu ductless systems is that there is absolutely no need for me to connect my refrigeration gauges to the system when I dump the charge. Reason being, it comes pre-charged with everything that I need. Daniel is now opening up all of the service valves for the two circuits. Very nice. We'll put the cover on, disconnect our hoses, clean up, and have a nice day. Okay, it is 11.25 in the morning. We started this job, I believe, he said 7.00. 35 right because he expected us at 745 we got here 10 minutes early and at 735 we discussed layout of the in inside units positioning of the outside unit and we started getting the job done so now here it is 1125 the only thing left to do is that the homeowner needs to get an electrician in here to wire up the unit but this ladies and gentlemen this is how pipe doctor and my team how we professionally, efficiently, and effectively install a two-zone Bosch. Sorry, two-zone Bosch. A two-zone Fujitsu. It's going to be Bosch one day. But I have to, like, for simplicity, you know, as a contractor, I install what I'm comfortable working with and what I'm comfortable servicing. And I've installed, no exaggeration, probably several hundred Fujitsu systems over the past 15 years. So I'm quite comfortable with the machines. I've tried Friedrich, you know, AKA suck ass. I think they suck. The wiring is just, I don't know, just stupid, stupid. But it's happened to really like Fujitsu and that's why we're a Fujitsu elite contractor. All right, one thing left to do and that's to brand the system with my sticker. If you ain't testing, you're guessing. All right, always full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can get that sticker on one handedly. There you go. There it is. Another beautiful job done by the Pipe Doctor, with Daniel and Peter and myself. And just in case you're wondering, this video in its entirety was filmed exclusively on an iPhone 11 S in 4K with 60 frames per second. So I hope you really appreciated the video quality of this video. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and remember sharing is caring. Catch you on the next one. Until then, be well, God bless, stay safe.